Welcome to chapter 13. This is an exciting chapter where we start to look at some of the interactions between organisms and also interactions uh, within species. And we apply a lot of the concepts that we've been learning over the last few chapters in particular in order to understand how animals compete for the resources that are available to them. During this chapter, I'll be talking you through uh, interspecific competition. That's competition amongst the individuals in a species. And then we'll look at interspecific competition as well and see what impact that has on niches and also on the concept of competitive exclusion. We'll be talking, I'll be talking quite a bit about Gauss's principle of competitive exclusion. And then we'll look at some mathematical formulas that explain the effects of competition one species on another. And finally, we'll end up the chapter by, a, I'll be talking about character displacement, how competition actually changes the morphology of some species. We'll start out by looking at three different modes of competition, interference, intraspecific, and interspecific. Interference is really just a special type of interaction that animals have. It's an aggressive interaction between individuals whereas intraspecific is competition of a variety of types between individuals of the same species. In the introduction to this chapter, your book talked about damselfish on the coral reef and how they compete for space on, that, on the coral reef in order to better preserve their food. Interspecific competition occurs between different species and again can have many forms, but basically it occurs when there are limited resources and the two different species are trying to make use of similar resources. One of the first experiments that you read about in your chapter had to do with plants and how their growth rates were greater when there were fewer plants or lower density populations. And in this example, it showed that as plant densities increase, they go through a process called cell thinning, which is a result of the competition between plants, even within the same species. Within species competition or intraspecific competition was demonstrated for arthropods in the insect Homoptera, in which they found that when they were competing extensively as the density increased, growth rates tended to decrease as they saw in the, the plant example. I would argue that the most important concept in this chapter is the principle of competitive exclusion, which Gauss developed. And it basically says that two species can't use the same resource in the same place at the same time. Therefore, two species can't occupy the same niche. In that situation where they are together in the same niche, one of them is going to outcompete the other. And this was demonstrated with the experiments that Gauss did with the paramecia in the lab. There have been many studies of feeding niches in all sorts of animals from fish to bear. But one of the most interesting and the most significant was the study that Grant did on the Galapagos Islands he and his wife worked together on these islands for close to 20 years. For several months each year, they lived in tents on the island and suffered through storms and heat and the 
blistering sun. And during that time, they got to know each of the finches individually and observed them and measured their beak sizes and uh, wing sizes and kept track of each finch over the years. And through this process, they were able to observe the changes that occurred as these birds went through a, an extreme drought period in 1977. And they noted during that process that the birds that um, were smaller and were feeding on the smaller seeds ended up dying out, whereas the birds that were able to handle the bigger seeds that had the larger beaks were the ones that survived. What they also noticed was that the differentiation between the niches increased during that drought period as well. Now I'm going to move into the realm of mathematical modeling in order to explain a little bit more about competition. Metz summarized his 40 years of investigations um, into papers that had been done on mathematical models and lab studies and explained that this is really a, a simplification of natural systems that provides us uh, insight into phenomena that we may not be able to otherwise uh, truly understand and experiment with. The Latka Voltaire mathematical model that describes competition is based on the logistic formula, and you can see this if you look at page 294 and 295 of your book. What it does is it takes the growth curve for two different species that are competing and builds in a competitive factor, alpha into that logistic growth formula and adds it to the leveling effect of K or the carrying capacity. The Latka Voltaire model basically says that a species is going to stop growing when N, the species number, equals K, the carrying capacity for that species, minus alpha of species 2 on species 1. So the competitive effect of species 2 on species 1 times the number of species 2. And that would indicate where the growth of species 1 would end. And then you have the same formula for species 2 indicating a level at which species 2 would no longer grow when these two are living together. So from this, graphs can be developed that show isoclines or lines, and anything above that line would indicate that the population would decrease. Anything below the line would indicate that the population would increase. And when the two lines cross, that point where they cross is an area where the two species can coexist. So the following graphs then can be understood. In these graphs, if you look carefully at them, first of all at graph A, you can see that the isocline for species 1 is above the isocline for species 2. And the isocline for species 1 extends from K1 to K1 over alpha 1, 2. So if we start in the bottom left hand corner with both populations growing at the same rate, when we reach the isocline for species 2, which is K2 to K2 over alpha 2, 1, that's where population 2 is going to stop growing, but population 1 continues to grow and will eventually push out population 2, and, and therefore population 1 wins. In graph B, you have the opposite scenario that we see in the first graph, and in that case, species 2 wins.
and in then in graph C, the lines cross, but if some environmental uh, change occurs and, and drives the uh, species off of that intersecting point, then one species or the other is going to win depending on which direction the populations were pushed. It's only in graph D that populations can coexist. And that's because no matter where you are on that graph, the populations are going to be driven to this coexistence number in the center of, of the two lines where they intersect. And you can follow this through if, if you're, say, in the lower left-hand corner again, and population uh, one grows faster than two, you're going to reach that limit for one, and then uh, population two will grow and finally you'll reach that coexistence point. We've talked before about how competition can restrict species to a realized niche, which is smaller than their fundamental niche, but it also can drive changes in the fundamental niche by causing some characteristics to actually change over time through selection of a certain portion of the population can end up with some genetic and then morphological changes that will affect the way that the organism can use resources. Tansley demonstrated this with his work on two species of bed straw, gallium, in which he saw a, a narrow range of soil types develop over time for these two different species as a result of competition. So finally this type of extensive competition leads to character displacement and the, the reason behind that is that by shifting the morphological characteristics as a result of the harsh conditions which cause severe competition that reduces the overlap in uh, the niche of species that are living in the same area and therefore they're able to utilize the resources more effectively and reduce interspecific competition. We can see this on the, the graph that describes what happened to species of finches on the Galapagos Islands when they were living together versus each species living on its own. And you can see that when they're living together, the beak sizes were displaced. One species became was smaller and the other species had larger beak sizes when they were living together than when they were living separately on different islands. This character displacement or change in beak size in this case allowed the two species of finches to live together on the same island and uh, divide up the resources that are available more effectively. So the key points from this chapter then are intra and interspecific competition the competitive exclusion principle that uh, Gauss developed and the mathematical model that describes competition between species and then the way that competition tends to separate niches based on character displacement.